it's a pleasure to talk to you today, even if from a, a very long way away. But I feel close to Peru, emotionally, if a long way geographically. I'm going to talk about social determinants of health and tuberculosis. In recent times, I've talked about women's health, children's health, emerging infectious diseases, non-communicable disease, cardiovascular disease, mental health. Social determinants is highly relevant to all of these. You will know, I hope, that we published the report of the Commission on Social Determinants of Health in 2008. We called our report Closing the Gap in a Generation and we said that to put right the inequalities in health within countries and between countries is a matter of social justice and key to such action is empowerment of individuals, of communities and indeed of whole societies. What this slide shows is the relation between gross national income of a country and tuberculosis incidence. And you can see there's actually two graphs here. One is for African countries and the other for all other countries. And what it shows, although both are downward sloping, in other words, the greater the gross national income of a country, the lower the estimated TB incidence, the relation is much shallower in Africa. It means that improved income of a country is not being translated into improvements in tuberculosis in the same way in Africa as it is elsewhere. In Peru, there's been good progress. These three graphs show incidence, prevalence and mortality. And in all three cases, you can see this downward sloping graph. There's variation, of course, around the estimate but it's downward sloping. That's probably related to improved income in Peru and it's also probably related to specific actions to reduce tuberculosis. Why should low income be related to tuberculosis? The answer is we've got quite a lot of evidence living and working in crowded and poorly ventilated conditions, indoor air pollution, HIV infection, malnutrition, smoking, diabetes, misuse of alcohol, are all reasons why people in lower socioeconomic positions might be more exposed to risk of TB. And what the, these data show is the relative risk prevalence and population attributable risk fraction of selected downstream risk factors for TB in 22 high burden countries. So you can see that HIV infection has a huge relative risk associated with TB infection. Malnutrition, a fourfold increased risk in tuberculosis. Looking at the last column, it's the population attributable fraction you can see malnutrition is estimated to account for 34% of TB infection in these high burden countries. Diabetes, alcohol use, active smoking and indoor pollution all associated with excess TB incidence prevalence and account for a high proportion of tuberculosis in the population. And because of that strong link with malnutrition, it's appropriate if we want to think about social determinants in TB, to think about social determinants and malnutrition. This graph shows us the relation between GDP of a country and moderate and severe stunting 
short height for age in children. And it shows two things. One is the very steep relation at low incomes of gross national income of a country and tubercular and stunting of children. The higher the income, the less the stunting. The curve of course levels off after a GNP of about $10,000, the relationship between gross national product and stunting is rather shallow. But the second thing it shows is a great deal of variation around the line. So I've shown here Peru. It has a high level of stunting given its gross national income. And then look below the line. You've got countries like Jamaica, the Ukraine, Moldova, countries with low gross national income, but less stunting than you would predict from that level of income. And what this suggests is potentially there are two routes to deal with malnutrition. One is to reduce poverty and the other is to look at the links between poverty and poor growth of children and try and interrupt those. And that suggests having integrated programs to address nutrition during pregnancy and in early childhood. And for example, we've got the Good Start in Life program in Peru, which reduced the prevalence of stunting for children under age three in, ch in communities covered by the program from 57% to 37%. Now that's in exactly what you would like to see if one's addressing the link between malnutrition and tuberculosis. And of course, in many countries, perhaps most countries, we see a very clear social gradient in stunting. The dotted, the red line here shows stunting by family income quintiles in Brazil in 1974-75. And you can see this very steep association between family income and stunting. Now each of those colours represents a different time period. So by the time we get to 2006-07, the slopes nearly flat. They've abolished the social gradient in stunting in Brazil. So there are big inequalities in malnutrition, but they can be addressed really, really quickly. And to do that, the Commission on Social Determinants of Health reviewed the world's literature on what could be done. And we had three principles of action. The conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work and age. The structural drivers of those conditions at global, national and local level and the importance of monitoring, training and research. And in the conditions of daily life we had recommendations on early child development and education, healthy places, fair employment, social protection and universal health care. And in the structural drivers health equity in all policies, good global governance, gender equity, political empowerment, market responsibility, and fair financing. Clearly, this takes action outside the health sector. And the question is, why should sectors other than the healthcare sector be interested? And my argument is that health and the fair distribution of health are a good measure of how we're doing as a society. If we get things right in finance, in early child development, in education, in environment, health will improve and health inequities will diminish. And that means putting social justice at the heart 
of all social policy. Thank you.